Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Aquarium Live. My name is Amanda, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and we are excited that you decided to join us today for our program. Now, before we get started, let me also let you know how you can participate with us today. If you would like to text in any questions that you have, uh, we invite you to dial this number right here, 562-286-1838. And parents or children, please ask your parents to make sure you have their permission because text messaging rates may apply. Uh, if you are watching this at a later time after the program has aired, uh, you can also participate and you can email us any questions you have by using the email live at lbaop.org because we are always here and would love to hear from you. All right, well, I shouldn't say we're always here because we go home too, <laughs> but we are available anytime um, to check those emails and respond to you. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to focus today on camouflage and how fish use camouflage. There might be other animals that do, but we're gonna focus on fish. And to help us out in discovering and exploring this topic, we're going to use the help of my friend, Joe, Captain Joe. We're gonna see if he can pull him up and see if he can help us out with this. Let's see where Captain Joe is. Uh, hi, Captain Joe. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Looks like you're swimming. Are you swimming? Well, hello there, boys and girls. It's Captain Joe here, and yes, as a matter of fact, I am swimming underneath water right now inside the tropical galley. I've finally mastered my technique of underwater breathing, just like my idol, the harbor seal. Oh, oh, really? Um, are you sure? How are you talking underwater? It doesn't matter. Anyways, let's just go ahead and observe some fish. This beautiful fish. Wow, that's so cool. Look at them swimming there. Look at those colors. Oh, hi, Captain Joe. Hey. Uh. How strange. She must be able to hold her breath underneath water as well. What the uh, hell is... Captain Joe, I, I don't think you're swimming. <laughs> All right, you caught me. But someday I will be able to hold my breath underwater like my idol, the harvest. Anyways, we are here in the tropical gallery and I do have to tell you boys and girls, we have a lot of very, very colorful fish here today. That's great. How do they use those colors? Well, that is a very good question again. And we might as well do what we always do. Let's investigate. All right, well, we are going to investigate. And as Captain Joe helps us to investigate, we're also going to invite you to do so at home. And we're gonna start with this animal right next to me. Do you know what this is? This is an eel. Now, the eel is a very interesting animal. And as you look at it, you might notice some things that look different about this animal compared to other fish. And since we're talking about camouflage, let's think about what this animal could do to help it to camouflage. Now, camouflage is a big word, and to make sure everyone understands what it is, uh, well, camouflage has to do with color, but sometimes people think it means an animal can change their color. But camouflage isn't always a changing of the color, but it's an advantage of taking advantage of the color an animal is to help it to blend into its environment. And so camouflage is a blending in or a hiding in the habitat or the environment that an animal is in. So sometimes the natural colors of an animal help it to camouflage. Other times animals have the ability to change their color. Now the eel here is not an animal that changes its color, but it does take advantage of the color in a very interesting way. Its body is not always this color, but it has a layer over its body, this sort of slimy mucusy layer that has a yellowish tint. And while the, the eel's body itself is more of a bluish color, those two colors together give it kind of this greenish color. And it has this really cool look to it. But I want you to also notice the type of habitat it's in. Do you see the habitat around me? What kinds of things do you notice in this habitat? Do you see those rocks? Now I also want you to look at how the rocks look and look at how the eel's skin kind of looks. That 
outer covering on its body. Look at how it also looks kind of wrinkly. And you know what? If it wanted to hide in those rocks, it has a body shape that can allow it to do so pretty easily. Now here's another kelp forest habitat, a habitat that an eel could be found in. Look at these rocks. Do you see how they, they almost kind of look like the skin that the eel had. But also, do you see any color that looked similar to the color of the eel? Ah, what about this here? What about all this seaweed and the kelp that we have in the exhibit? And so in this habitat, that eel's color also helps him to camouflage if he wants to go out and swim around. Now, you may not have seen an eel swimming around very often. And in fact, if you haven't been diving in the ocean, you probably never have. But even divers in the ocean very seldom get to see the eels coming out and swimming around with their long, skinny bodies. And that's because they spend a lot of their time hiding. So they're trying to camouflage by hiding in between the rocks sometimes. And they don't have those fins on the outside of their bodies like this big old giant sea bass has. Of course, his side fin is uh, off the camera here. But if you look at, oh, look at this fish right here, the sheephead. This California sheephead fish has fins out to the side. This fish right here also has some fins on the side that would not be able to allow it to hide in the cracks and crevices of rocks like an eel can. So another way that even the behavior of an animal can help it to camouflage by hiding in and blending into its habitat. So that's the moray eel. Now it looks like we have a question already from Jackson and Jackson wants to know where do fish get their color? Well, that's a good question, Jackson. A lot of fish have their colors that are basically part of their DNA. It's how their genetics and what color they are depends kind of on the type of fish that they are. Now, there are some animals that can change their colors based on the types of food that they eat or the food that they eat influences what color they are. I don't know that that's the case of any fish, uh, but fish can look different at different stages of their life. And it just has to do with how they are kind of programmed in their body, what colors are going to be obvious on them. Uh, but they can change their colors due to um, like what time of day it is. If it's nighttime, they have the ability, and I honestly can't explain to you how, Jackson, they can kind of dull their colors so they're not as bright and obvious to other animals around them so that they can sleep in peace and not have to worry about hiding from uh, predators. Now, again, I don't know how they do that, but they have the ability to. Now, these are fish that also can change their color a little bit as they change. Now, some of these you might notice have kind of a pinkish and orangish sort of color to them. And you might notice some that have this big square on the side of them. And males have those coloring. Uh, they have a square. It's called um, a square spot antheus. And the females do not. So I'm trying to see if there's any obvious ones here. Oh, this one right here is kind of hard to see in my view. But look for some fish that have square spots on them. I know we usually think about spots as being round, but we call this one a square spot because it looks like he's got a square on the side of his body. Uh, so those are the males and the females look different. So I wish I could give you a better explanation to exactly how it happens, but they can change from time in their life from when they're younger to when they're older and also whether they're male or female. And these fish can actually change between male or female. So their coloring will change with that as well. Oh, right here, there's a good example. Do you see that sort of spot that it has, that pinkish spot right on the side? So that's that square spot, Antheus. So thank you to my friend Alicia for finding that uh, view for us. So thank you, Alicia. Okay, so let's go ahead and play a game. Do you guys like playing games? Uh, while we're catching up with Joe, uh, we'll go, oh, actually, well, yeah, let's go ahead and play a game. We're going, I want to make sure I'm doing the right thing and including all the fun stuff so you guys can all participate with me. Uh, but we are going to do a little, mm, a little challenge. Let's just say a challenge. Since we're speaking about camouflage, let's get away and figure out what kind of animal might be behind these bubbles. Now, this is your opportunity to text in if you want, because I'll wait a little bit. It says right here, this number, 562-286-1838. If you have your parents' permission, you can text us and tell us what kind of animal do you think is behind these bubbles. So we've got a bubble curtain, lots of bubbles coming up. 
But there is an animal that can camouflage. That's behind these bubbles. Could it be a fish? Or could it be another animal? So if you think you know what animal might be behind these bubbles, we invite you to text on in. So as I'm waiting for answers to see if you can figure this out, of course, I don't want to block it too much because now you have to look through the bubbles and me, right? That's kind of hard. So I'll stand off to the side as you look and see if you can get any clues about what type of habitat it might be. Can you tell the difference between the habitat and the actual animal and all these bubbles? That could be really hard. But if you think you know what animal this might be, I'll see if anyone, if my friend Stewie sees any answers coming on in. All right, so. Okay, Olivia and Alex were the first ones to give us their guess. Okay, we're seeing lots of other ones coming through. They're saying it's an octopus. What do you guys think? Does it look like an octopus to you? Well, I guess we'll make it a little bit easier to view by stopping that curtain of bubbles and let's reveal what animal this is. Oh, you guys are absolutely correct. It is an octopus, but can you see it? Can you tell where it is? Well, right here, this is the eye of the octopus. Now, they've also got the spot right here. That's not an eye, but it is a spot. And that's how we know that this is actually called a two-spot octopus. So this is a type of octopus that we can find here in Southern California waters. And do you see also right behind its eyes, he's got this big mass right here. This is oftentimes what people think of as the head of the octopus. But this right here is the head. Because if you think about your head, your head is where your eyes are, right? Your brain is up here. So your, their brain would be right between those eyes. And this is their mantle or their big, um, what I like to call their sack of guts, their visceral mass. They trail all their stomach and all those things behind their head and then they've got all their arms. Remember how many arms an octopus has? They've got eight, and they've got suction cups all on those arms. But look at also the pattern that they have. Look at how they have all these, almost looks like little circles all over their body and matching so well the colors and even the circles of the environment that they're living in, their habitat. So the octopus, of course, is a great uh, master of disguise and camouflage. But let's step away from the octopus and get back to the fish that we're focusing on and how they might camouflage. So let's check in again with Captain Joe. I think he said he was, he was going to check on more about how they use their colors. So let's see if we can catch up with him. There he is. Hey, boys and girls. I'm here at the Tropical Gallery observing, hiding out using camouflage. What I've found out is that these animals have many different colors and they use them for many different reasons. So, let's go observe and find out more. All right, while he goes and observes, goes to observe and find out more, let's take a look at another fish in our tropical gallery. This one right here is called a copper banded butterfly fish. And they have some really unique things about their body. And if you notice some, you can text us in. You can text in your answers. But one of the things I notice is their bright, beautiful color that they have. What colors do you see? Do you see yellow and white and even some black? So those are three colors that are very common in butterfly fish. They have yellow, black, and white. And different kinds will have them in different places on their body and will help us to identify what species it is. But this one is really fun to look at. If you look at his spots, or I'm sorry, his stripes, these long stripes here, do you notice anything else that's in the, in the stripes? So this one is just a straight stripe, right? But then it looks like this stripe is kind of going through something right there. And then it goes up to the top. And then this one looks like it's also got something inside of the stripe. And over here, it looks like this one has something inside of the stripe as well. I would love to hear what observations you make or why you think it might be like that. Uh, but I do have some other questions that are coming in. Now, Micah wants to know, do seahorses change color when in camouflage, when in camo. So seahorses can change their color over a long period of time. Uh, so they can blend in a little bit more depending on what type of habitat they're in. 
but it does take a lot of energy from the seahorse to do that, but they can do that. So they do have some ability to do that, but not a quick change, and it would, something, it would take a, a while for them to do. Um, and it might even take even a few days for them, uh, if not longer than that. Uh, but thank you for the question. Now, we're also looking at some other animals in our tropical gallery. So when I say tropical, do you notice the difference in these colors that you see in here versus the kelp forest that we were looking at earlier where the moray eel lives? Look at how many colors you see. Do you see any yellow colors? Just like our copper banded butterfly fish. Do you see other fish that have yellow? Do you see any other fish that have stripes? Oh, look at this one right here. Now this one's not a butterfly fish, but it does have the yellow and it does have kind of that white color. This is a spade fish is one of the names for it. And there are also some fish that I see with yellow tails right here. So the rest of their body isn't yellow. That one's not a butterfly fish either. You may know that fish by another name. We call it a pallet tang or a pallet surgeon fish here at the aquarium. There's also some other yellow fish back there. And right here, it looks like there's some yellow fish. So lots of yellow colors. We didn't see a whole lot of that in Blue Cavern, but lots of bright colors here. And it helps them somehow to camouflage because notice the habitat is also very colorful. Do you see some of the yellow down here and some of the pinks and maybe even like purple colors that are in this particular habitat? So many different shapes, lots of different colors, lots of places for fish to hide. So kind of interesting. Now I want to know, let's see, where do fish, oh, we got that, that one already. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any questions if we had more questions coming in. But maybe we can pull up that butterfly fish again. Because this is that one that has these stripes, but then it's hiding things inside the stripes. This one is actually starting, to, do you see that little line right there? That's actually the covering of the gills where the fish breathes. So this covering is going right through that line. It's almost like they're using that line to help camouflage it so you can't see it. Also, do you notice how this right here, its eye is being camouflaged in the stripe? So, boy, it's like they're trying to hide and confuse something to know, like, are they really there? Where, where is this animal? Because look at this. This one has a big old black spot on it. And that one kind of looks like an eye too, doesn't it? We, we call this a false eye spot. So a false eye spot is something that might look like an eye to another predator, but is actually not the eye because the eye is right here. Again, trying to be camouflaged. And this one, they're almost like they're highlighting it. Like, here's my eye. And where do you find an eye on an animal? Well, on its head, right? So if this was the head of the fish down here, you would probably expect the fish to be swimming, oops, that way, right? Facing forward. So if an animal starts to come at it, they're going to expect it to swim away from them or forward. And so they might expect it to go this way. Whereas the fish, actually, this is its head and it's gonna go the other way. So that might be some confusion. Or maybe it's like, look at how big my eyes are. I'm watching you, so stay away from me. So we don't know how they're using it, but it is a good detractor and it seems to help these animals to survive. So this is a good adaptation. Okay, so let's see if Joe has found, um, let's actually see what he's discovered as he's been exploring in our tropical gallery. Hey boys and girls, I am here with our seahorses and I found my friend Jin. She's an Aquarius here at the aquarium. Jin, what are some of the things you do here at the aquarium? I do a lot of things to take care of the animals here, including feeding and a lot of cleaning. Very nice, very nice. Now, we're here with the seahorses and we do know that they have very long faces and very curly tails, but we're learning about colors today. Can you tell us a little bit how they use color in their environment? Absolutely. Seahorses use color to camouflage or to hide within their environment. And because they're so well hidden, they can sneak up on their prey. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> now, are, sneaking sounds very cool. Are there any other animals in the aquarium that sneak up on their prey? Absolutely. We have a lot. They are very hard to find, so we really need to use your eyes. I suggest you go ahead and head down the Blue Cavern and look at our giant sea bass. Mm, giant sea bass. I think that's something we definitely need to investigate. All right, as Joe goes off to uh, discover more at Blue Cavern, let's take a closer look at these seahorses that they were talking about. Aren't they cool? Look at them. Look at their funny body shape. 
Look at how they swim. Boy, how do they swim? Do you see those little tiny fins on their sides of their heads right up there? This is a sea dragon. So very similar to a seahorse, but it's called a sea dragon. It's much more decorated. Do you see those little fins right there? They have little fins on their backs they're waving to help them move, so they move pretty slowly. But watch them eat. These are little tiny shrimp that we give our little seahorses to eat with those tiny mouths that they have. Look at them eat. Whoa, did you see that? It was so fast. So they suck in their food really, really fast, but they eat really small food. You can't, oh, and they start off life really small too. These are baby seahorses, and we have to feed them even smaller food, like little baby brine shrimp. So these are another type of plankton that those little teeny tiny seahorses eat when they first hatch, when they're first born uh, from their dad. So the baby seahorses come from the dad, not from the mom. The dads give birth. Isn't that interesting? Okay, we have a couple other questions. We have a question from Jude who wants to know, do any fish camouflage in the sand? Jude, that's a great question. And yes, they do. Uh, we might even be able to find an example of one that does that. Uh, one of my favorite ones to talk about, of course, are stingrays. Stingrays are really cool animals. They have that flat body so that they can sit on the, on the sand on the bottom of the ocean, and they can even kind of bury underneath the sand a little bit and camouflage really well. Now, there's also some other fish called flatfish. And even though the stingray is kind of flat, it has what we call a depressed body shape. And we have some other fish that normally start off life this way, but then as they grow, they start to swim on their sides and the eye that would normally be on the underside travels to the top. So here's a view from our online learning center of a flatfish. This is a halibut here, the California halibut. And see his funny looking eyes right here? Well, this is the normal side. But this eye used to be on the other side of his body, on the side that's up against the sand right now. And then when he was just a couple weeks old, his eye moved to join it on this side of the body. So you're looking at a fish who's laying on his side and he's got this crazy little grumpy face right here. But notice how well he's camouflaging. So he can actually change the pigment to match the sand that he's in. So they hide really well down there. So great question, Jude. Thanks for bringing that up and giving us the opportunity to look at a flatfish. And then Drew wants to know, can fish camouflage to look like water? That's another really good question. A lot of fish you'll notice have a sort of silvery color. If you looked at our blue cavern exhibit um, and having that silvery color also helps them to camouflage with the water a little bit. But there are some animals, maybe not as many of the fish that I can think of, uh, but certainly other animals in the ocean that do camouflage by being see-through, that you can almost look right through their body like a sea jelly, and they camouflage with the ocean. So here's a nice example. So this one right here is what kind, oh, what kind of jelly is this? Bump. A bump jelly. Bumpy. Bumpy jelly. <laughs> this is a new one to me. I actually haven't seen this one before. But look at how it's kind of see-through. You can see right from one side to the other, and they have their long tentacles sticking out. So that's a way an animal can camouflage, even with the water, by being clear, because the water itself is kind of clear. If you were to go to the water and put it in a cup and look at it, it wouldn't look blue. It would look see-through. It'd look clear. So an animal that has a sort of see-through look to it also can camouflage very well that way. All right, well, let's see if we have, um, if Joe has had any success at finding Blue Cavern and looking and seeing what kind of, oh, things might be going on there. Let's see if he found it. Oh, actually, it looks like he did. So he's found our Blue Cavern exhibit. Great job. Um, uh oh, where'd Joe go? Oh, yeah. Joe. I'm hiding in this pretend seaweed or kelp to blend in with our kelp habitat. Hmm. Well, you found the giant sea bass I right there. I sure did. You. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Hmm. Let's look at the giant sea bass. Now, boys and girls, here is one of our giant sea bass. Sometimes in the ocean, instead of blending into a rock, an animal will try to blend into the shadows or into the water itself. Now the dark mottled color of the giant sea bass allows it to lurk in the dark parts of the kelp forest 
only to lunge forward when a small prey fish comes near and sucks it right into its mouth. The camouflage, paired with its careful, slow swimming, make the giant sea bass almost ninja-like in its stealth, even though it can eventually grow to weigh over 600 pounds. Now, boys and girls, these are just some examples of how these animals use color in their environment. I'm going to send it back to you in the studio, and you're going to learn a little bit more about animals and how they use their color in the wild. Wow. Well, I noticed a lot of polka dots. What about stripes? Hmm. I'm pretty sure I saw a striped animal in the Tropical Pacific Gallery. How about you meet me there? Okay, sounds good. So we saw lots. Do you see those big spots on the polka, or the big spots on the giant sea bass? Yeah, they had like polka dots on them. And so that seems like those spots were helping them to camouflage their color and the way he was talking. Ah, do you notice those spots on them now? They look like big giant polka dots, a big giant sea bass. But I also wonder about stripes. We were looking at stripes earlier on the butterfly fish. Do you think there are other animals that have stripes too? Well, let's see. But I don't know if we have time. Let me see if we can go to um, a place here at the, the aquarium where our Molina Animal Care Center. If you guys wanted to take a quick peek with me into what goes on at the care center, this is a place where we can give extra care and attention to any animals that need it. Uh, so let's check in with my friend Shara. Welcome Ocean Rangers, I'm Shara Seals and I'm here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our veterinary hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I work with Dr. Lance Adams, our veterinarian, and we take care of all of these animals. Our animals can't exactly tell us what's wrong with them. So we use special tools to help us figure out what's going on on the inside. Here's our ultrasound. This allows us to view the internal organs of an animal, like the kidneys or the liver or even the stomach. We use this probe here with a little bit of this gel and we run it over the body part that we want to look at. This screen right here will show us a picture of what we're looking at. It'll show us the inside. We use this ultrasound on one of our harbor seals, Shelby. Shelby is a mom. She's had two pups here at the aquarium in the past few years, Bigsby and Toby. We knew she was pregnant because we used this on her. We placed this probe with a little bit of the gel on her big belly and we could see a seal pup inside of her. This is just one of the tools that we use to see inside the animals. Let's take a look at some others. This is our x-ray. Unlike the ultrasound that takes pictures of soft tissues and organs, we use this to take pictures of bones. We place the animal on the plate here and we snap the x-ray. We can take pictures of certain body parts or the entire body. After we take the x-ray, it displays on this screen. Dr. Adams uses this and many other tools to help figure out what's wrong with our animals here at the aquarium. This way, we can keep all of our animals healthy. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks, Shara. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at that and how we can care for the animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Well, let's check in with Joe and see what he's found. Hey, boys and girls, so these are the animals with black and white stripes I was talking about. These are our banded sea crates. We have one right there, and they are very venomous animals, and they use their coloration to give a warning off to other animals. They basically say, look out, I'm quite dangerous. They're very, very cool. That is really cool. Um, I think we have some other footage that we're going to show the boys and girls too. So we'll, we'll say goodbye to him a little bit later. Uh, but while we were uh, visiting the care center, we also discovered that we have some cool footage of a flatfish, a halibut that's blending into its habitat. So we're going to show that to you right here. So they can camouflage with the sandy bottom. Do you see how well they camouflage? Look at that shape. You see its shape in there? It's totally matching the sand in its habitat. So a sandy bottom habitat is 
a habitat where you see a lot of camouflaging animals like flatfish. Now, Ryan also asked a question. He wanted to know what is the largest fish that can camouflage? And I would say it would have to be the whale shark because the whale shark is a, the largest fish. Not that the whale shark changes color, but it has some interesting patterns on its body and also some coloration that makes it darker on the top and lighter on the bottom. And that's what we call counter shading. So counter shading is a way of camouflaging. So they're darker on the top as something above them looks down at the deep dark ocean and they're lighter on the underside. So if you're below them looking up at the bright sunlight, uh, you see that lighter color and it helps them camouflage as well. So thank you, Ryan, for that question. And it is time to get going. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss any questions, uh, but we'd like to say bye to Captain Joe real quick. And so we'll say bye to Joe and also bye to all of you. Thank you for joining us at uh, Aquarium Live today. And I hope you'll tune in for our other programs later on this afternoon. Bye everyone.